These are eight tips to use agents with a 365 Copilot license, which has just been released for general availability. This video, we are going to be using real life examples inspired by my friend James, who is a burnt out salesman trying to do his regular job of getting sales contracts while also training a new sales team. So with that being said, let's nerd out. First, we are going to start off with the built-in agents within SharePoint. Now, most of us are familiar with Microsoft Teams. So from your Teams dashboard, go to any channel, and then under files, we can go open in SharePoint, and this will open up your documents library within SharePoint, where you can then navigate to your Teams homepage. Let's now head on up to this Copilot icon on the top right. Quick note is that I do have a 365 Copilot license for this video, but we will be touching on licensing at the end. So this is our SharePoint agent that is pre-built for us with predefined prompts to get us started. Now, because this is pre-built, we aren't able to customize these prompts, which gets us to custom agents, which we will also be covering later in the video. So to get started, let's see how we can use these resources. I'll just press enter. And then now we can see that it is working on the request and combing through our home tab. So this is a great outline of the contents of this homepage and how we can use them, which is a really great training tool as well as resource for new team members because all of these home pages are custom built. So when you land on it as a new person, it's not a familiar space and it can be a little bit difficult to navigate. So by having this pre-built prompt here, you can see exactly how you can use the different resources on this page. So we can see that by having that pre-built prompt right here within SharePoint, that we can get insights on what our documents are without even opening them up. And you can figure out how you can use them and how they apply to you. Now this answer is quite generic and this homepage is also generic, but I have tested this out on more robust SharePoint pages and it is a really great tool. So now I want to move on to how we can chat with Copilot. So at the bottom right, we can see that there are some suggested prompts for us to chat with Copilot. And Microsoft has indicated that every single day there are 2 billion, yes, billion documents uploaded to Microsoft 365. So using Copilot within SharePoint allows us to tap into the resources that we already have access to, to gain insights and gather information. For more inspiration on prompts, we can go down to this view prompts button, and then you can see what you can ask Copilot that will tell you more about a topic. And then if you press the forward slash button, we can toggle to files and we can even insert a file to ask Copilot to tell us more about that specific product. And beyond these suggested prompts and inspirations, you can just ask Copilot questions using basic language. And I really like to use this dictate button. I just got my first sales lead and I need help with the sales process. And we will see that it has picked up my voice and now we can send. And Copilot is now working through our request, going through the home page, and now it's looking for a sales contract. And then it's even congratulating me, which is really nice and encouraging. We can see that output, which provides us with our sales process and is even referencing our sales process official document at Amy's Animal Shop. So this is a great way for a new team member or anyone just to get information on their next steps based on policies and procedures, information that is already in place at your organization. Now let's head on over to our documents library. And on the right hand side, our chat history is going to pull over, but I'm just going to select the ellipses here and go new chat. And you will see that these predefined prompts this time around are slightly different. So these prompts adjust based on your location that you are within SharePoint. So this time let's select summarize files. We will press enter and we will see that it is working through our documents. And because I haven't provided 
specific documents for it to summarize. It's actually going to be providing me a summary of documents within our SharePoint site. Now, if we scroll on up to the top here, when you hover over the citation, we can see that this one is the home page that we were just on. This one is our Word document, which is our sales contract. This here is also a SharePoint page. This is actually a news post. Um, and then moving along, this one is our product sheet for our basic dog jacket, which is a PDF file. This is now pulling contents from all of the information in varying formats from within our SharePoint site. And now you can see where this page is coming from. So this is from Microsoft and the supported file types at the time of recording this video is pretty much everything. We are not able to reference images, meeting recordings or other videos or OneNote notebooks. It says coming soon, so stay tuned for those, but just keep this in mind when you are referencing or looking for documents with your SharePoint agent. In contrast, if we select this sales contract policies and go summarize files, then this time it is now going to summarize the sale contract policies file that I have already selected. So if you have a big document of policies or, or anything really, you know, 300 page document, just select the summarize files button and you can quickly gain insights without even opening up the document to see what it is about. Again, I always recommend referencing these and double checking, but this is just an example of how we can use Copilot at our fingertips. Moving on to a more advanced example, let's go into our product sheets folder. And here I'm just going to filter these documents so that we can select just a certain type of files. And here I just want to note that we have Amy's Animal Shop, which is of course us. And then we also have Wazoo Pets. So I want to exclude Wazoo Pets from our search here. So now we just have our medium and premium dog life jackets at Amy's Animal Shop. So if we select all of these files, then continuing with our sales lead, we're going to ask Copilot to create an elevator pitch for a five to 10 minute presentation about these products. And we can see that it is working away, providing us with the different file names here in the introduction, as well as an intro. And we can see that we have a little detailed explanation about each of these files. Again, I cannot emphasize it enough that you need to be checking these references. Do not go into that elevator pitch or the meeting without checking them, right? But we can hover over this and we can see that this is the Ultra Dog Life Jacket, which matches the header here. And then we've got some customer testimonials and a conclusion. So this is a great way that we can get Copilot to help our sales team gather insights and draft us presentations for upcoming meetings about our specific products. But going back to the Wazoo Pets, I needed to filter out those and only select Amy's Animal Shop. So this Copilot is not trained that Wazoo Pets is a competitor, which is where we get into those custom Copilots, which we are going to cover in just a moment. But before that, if we go up to the ellipses here, then we can do that new chat, which I've already shown you. You can clear all of your chat history. If you've just been playing around with Copilot and this is a bit messy, you can just clean slate, clear all of your history. But one thing that I do really like here is the ability to select one of these ellipses and you can rename your history. So you could say, like elevator pitch, and then you can add your customer name there so that you could quickly refer back to it at a later date if you wanted to reference those source materials. Additionally, if we go up to this about, if you're ever corresponding with a agent and you don't really know where it came from, what it's trained to do, go to this about section and we will see that this agent was automatically created from the site created by the system and it is sourced from the entire site. So this tells me that this is that pre-built agent. It's not a custom one. And because of that, we are not able to train it 
to act a specific way. So let's now dive into creating custom agents. For these custom agents, it is super easy to set up. You simply go create an agent. But custom agents give us a lot of flexibility. So understanding the different components is helpful in order to tailor it to your needs. And the first step is defining the resources or the files that you want this agent to work off of. You can adjust this later, but I do find it's easiest if you do have a specific folder to select that from the beginning. So in this example, I have another document library called sales contracts, and we are going to build an agent from this folder. So we will go create agent. And there we go. If you want to use that agent right out of the box and start to play with it, then you could simply go open agent, but I like to customize it in the edit window. So here we have the edit window and I recommend ensuring that the name of your agent is reflective of what its capabilities are. And you'll see why in the next steps, as well as having a logo. So right now this logo is generic and it actually just matches the logo of the team or SharePoint site. So by adding a custom image, then you will be able to easily identify it better. And then for the description, this is where we have that description in the about section. So it would just provide additional information to yourself or others about this SharePoint agent. And then on the right hand side, we have a preview pane where you can test out these prompts and tweak your agent as you need. But we'll get to those in just a moment. Next, we have the sources. And this is where you can adjust the contents of files that you want your agent to work off of. So in this case, we're just working off of the dog apparel team and that sales contracts document library. Now, I just want to note that you can add up to 20 sources for your agent. So you can select multiple SharePoint sites and multiple file sources in a combination of 20. But just be mindful that whoever you share this agent with, for the agent to work optimally, they will need to have permissions to all of these resources. Moving on to behavior, this area has so many advanced features providing a key role in how your agent is going to act and respond and how you're going to tailor it to your needs. So in another tutorial, I will be covering advanced tips specifically on behaviors. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, uh, to get started, this is the welcome message, which just displays here to get started. And then here we can define our custom prompts. So for our sales contracts, I want one of those custom prompts to be create a bullet list of new sales contracts, including dollar amount for brackets month. And that will prompt our team member to insert the month that they are looking for. You can update these additional ones as you need. And then for the instructions, you can again update these and I will be providing more advanced tips in another tutorial. But I would not recommend removing this or if you did want to change it, I would recommend putting in something similar. This just provides that behavior for your agent to provide accurate information about the content. And I mean, you can adjust the formal tone. You could say um, casual tone, but I would definitely recommend keeping this disclaimer in there as that's going to ensure that your agent acts just on your documents and isn't making assumptions based on generic processes. So let's go and save. And then now when we back out of here, we are going to see that our agent is creating in the right hand side. And we can now create a bullet list and we will just update that month. So we will say July 2025. So it's working on our requests. It's looking for sales contracts from July 2025 and wanting to include that dollar amount. So here it is referencing those files as well as the dollar amounts and the contracts. So we can see that this is how we can create custom agents and tailor it to our needs. And if we just refresh the screen, then you are going to see a new file has been added here, which is our agent. And if you just click on that, then it's going to open up the agent in a full window view. 
I personally like to open it in the side view. And to do that, we just select the ellipses, go open, and then sidebar view. You need to edit that agent again. Then you just select the ellipses and go to the edit pane. But now that our copilot is ready, let's see how we can use it to collaborate in a team environment. So if we go to the ellipses, then we can go copy link for teams. And this is going to copy a link that we can now paste in a group chat to add this agent. So we will just head on over to Teams. And here I have a Teams chat with Mike. So I'm just going to paste this agent in here. We are going to see a little card pop up. I'm going to send it. And then now this add to this chat button is going to appear. And at the time of recording this video, even team members that do not have a Copilot 365 license are able to collaborate with a chat. So let's pop into Mike's account and see how that looks. So here we are within Mike's Teams and we have that chat open that I just started and we can see the sales contract agent as well as that logo or icon. So this is why I recommend updating that icon as well as having a descriptive name for your agent. So when you are collaborating in a chat, you know exactly who you're talking with. And also when we hover over it, we have that description here as well as some details about the agent and then just some permissions and disclaimers from Microsoft about using these bots. So now let's see how we can actually use this agent to collaborate in our teams. We simply press the at sign and then we can just start to type the name of our agent and we will see that suggestion pop up. So I'll just tab through and then we are now going to ask it to summarize the key points about our pause emporium contract. So now that agent is working in the back end, reviewing our sales contracts, trying to find the one that relates to Pause Emporium, and it's going to be providing us with the details. So this is how we can work with our agents in chats and get insights on the fly, as opposed to chatting with a team member and being like, oh, let me go reference that file, locating the file, opening up, pulling the documents. This is just streamlining collaboration and just making the way that we work so much faster. Finally, we will touch on licensing. So from this article for Microsoft, um, it does provide a description about the features within SharePoint. So as I mentioned, I am using a Microsoft 365 Copilot license in this video. However, Mike is not. I have done a whole other video on the different versions of Copilot that I'll include in a link below. But as an alternative coming soon for organizations that have a Microsoft Copilot Studio license, there will be consumption billing or a pay-as-you-go meter option to provide that alternative. So stay tuned for that. There are so many new features coming out for Copilot and especially with these agents, I'm really excited for what the future holds. I will include that advanced tips video when creating custom agents as soon as it's ready here. But in the meantime, feel free to check out this recommended video by YouTube.